So to combine the states into the catcher game, I've added copies of my timer, my drop, and my catcher to my states project that's working on. We're not going to need the duck anymore. So I'm going to ditch the duck out of here. So let's kick out the duck. We're going to leave title the same. We're going to modify the game scene entirely. So with that, I'm just going to, I could comment it out so I can see it or go back into it. Uh, I did make this as a duplicate of the previous states I was working on, so I won't lose what I had before. And we're going to leave win and lose the same on it. And reset, well, we don't tell the duck to reset, so we don't need to put that into it. All right, so that gives us a starting point. Now, what we're going to realize as we do this is moving a lot of this over is going to be just a whole heck of a lot of copy-paste. So, ooh, I want, want my name, uh, and we'll modify that. So I'm going to go grab these variables that I have there. And put these in. I'm going to say catcher states. There we go. So let's get rid of, we stopped using that drop a long time ago. All right, so now we've copied over those variables. And now I'm going to go and grab the rest of the content that is in there. And we'll be adding that into our setup. Now, as we do this, we're probably going to find that we do have to change a few things around a little bit. Uh, again, we're not using that drop anymore. And so we may have to modify a few things, but we're off to a good start. So we have our setup there. And our title stays the same. Game is the one we care about. Now, because title win and lose are pretty much the same, I'm going to let those be down at the bottom because the place I want to really spend most of my time is verifying what I have is here in the draw and then game. Game is really the big one that we're working on. So previously we did all of this or most of this work inside draw where we said no stroke and then we cleared the background. We're going to have to go grab that. So we have a number of things that we will be updating as we go back through this. But if I go and grab the contents that were in draw, let's just copy that, dump that into our game here. Now it says, oh look, intersect. It doesn't know what that is. Well, that's because intersect is down here. So let's go copy that and we'll put that in. So we could put you know, these utilities down at the very bottom. I'm going to put them here now. Clear background's freaking out because we had a clear background down here. And uh, I'm going to move this up because we'll be working with it. So again, win and lose, they're not really going to change. Title's not really going to change. You'll just change the color, you'll change the text and do things like that. But we're not really going to worry too much about the rest of it. And now what we need to do, so we have um, reset game and uh, somehow we lost uh, our score as we went through here. Oh, so it turns out I uh, forgot to uh, save it before I made the copy, and I'm working on the copy, so if we notice, there was no score, so all of that scoring information was gone. Uh, so we need to add that back in, but that's okay because our catcher game didn't have a score either. So we will be adding the scoring back in to the whole project right now. So if we title, okay, we get to click, and then we uh, can win and lose. Okay, now we go intersect, reset. Currently, there's no way to win, 
But what we could do is we could visually show how many drops that we've been catching. And when we hit a certain number, which could be all of them, maybe we have to catch them all. And if we're going to do that, I'm going to, we don't want to catch 100, so I'll shrink it down to 10 so that we can win. But it's a good idea. Let's hit go and see if this is working. Title scene, click to play, and now we can see there's the drops. We're catching them. And yeah, okay. So it's working. Now what we want to do is to bring in the score. So as we work with this, score is an int. And score will just start score out at zero. And uh, let's see where, here's our game. So if a drop is caught, score will go up by one. Now right here, this would be the end of our game function. So it's not a bad idea to, on your closing curlies, to sometimes put in comments so you can figure out where you are in the code because when it gets long, it's really easy to lose it. So let's do this and choose fill. I'll just fill with white. And then we'll make a string s. And this is going to be score. Put a space, close quote, plus, and then our square variable. Now I can simply say text size. I want to make it a little bit bigger so it's easy to easier to see. And now text will display our string, comma, put it in 50 and down 50. So now that's going to show that on the screen every time we catch one. If we run it again, now we can see the score is going up as we catch them. So we're in good shape. Now what we could simply say is if score is equal to and equal to 10, meaning we've caught them all, game state equals win. So if we catch them all, and just so we don't have to watch it go by so painfully slow. One, two, three, hey, we won. And now look, the score is still going, the drops are falling where they were falling, oh, that's bad. Okay, um, wait, score is equal to three. Oh shoot, I can't win again, that's bad. So this is where we need to go back and revisit reset. So score is equal to zero, okay? Now let's try it, let's see how this works. One, two, three, hey, I won. Okay, one, two, three, hey, I won. One, two, uh-oh. Uh-oh, they're all caught, but I can't catch any more, so I can't win the game. So this means, besides setting the score, I need to tell the drops to reset themselves. So if we look at the drop, okay, we have a drop and it can be caught. It can display and it can update, but the drop doesn't have any means of resetting itself. If we go back into the duck, we see how the duck reset its position. So let's look at what happens when we catch the drop, we changed its color, we changed its speed, and we changed its Y position. So what we need to do is we need to add in a method void reset, and this time when we reset it, we need to speed Y, well, heck, Let's just go grab all of that. Why type if you don't have to, right? And let's get rid of these two lines right there. Clean up the formatting. So now they reset their Y position. They reset their speed. 
and their color goes back to red. So that now means the drops have a way to reset. But to cycle through all of the drops, we have to go back the same way we cycled through drops before, where we would cycle through our drops, and it's just like this where we're using a for loop, and it's a good idea just to reset every drop instead of wondering how many are there. So let's copy that. Wander down into reset. And now we don't want to make a new drop. We're just going to tell the drop to reset. So now that tells each of the drops to reset. So let's see how this plays out. And remember, whenever we're working, we're always doing kind of, we do a little bit and see how it works. Okay, good. They reset. Wait. How come they're all falling now again? They're not taking their time and cycling through like when the game starts. And our clue when we look at that should be active drops. Because not only do we have to reset the score, we told all the drops to reset themselves, but we have active drops. How many current drops are falling? We need to reset that as well. So inside the reset, we need to active drops is now going to be equal to zero as well. And this time, when I win the game, we don't have all the drops falling right away. Now, we do seem like a lot of them are falling because our release is pretty quick where our timer drop interval is 100 milliseconds. So if we slowed that down, we would be to you know half a second or 500 milliseconds. We, it would be pretty obvious how this is actually playing out. So we can see now they go slower. And now every half second, a new drop falls. So that's our clue that it's actually working, but that's a painful way to play the game.